This is Twit. Uh, Damon Reel and Noah Rubin, they're musicians. Oh. And they wanted mm -hmm. to do a good thing for the public domain. So they generated every possible melody. Wow. Every possible, it's like brute forcing it. Every possible melody within an octave. And, uh, and then they turned around and they put it in the Creative Commons. So oh, that really? if you're, that? It, it's a lot. They don't actually say. And it, by the way, these are eight note, twelve beat melody combos. So they're not. Okay. It's not really every possible melody, but it's every. But that's a common. I'm not a musician, but I gather that that's yeah, common there's, there's, for music. It's two mm -hmm. two bars. Yeah. The uh, the algorithm they wrote generates three hundred thousand melodies a second. Mm. <laughs> mm. And once a work like this is committed to tangible format, they put it on a hard drive. It's copyrighted. And in MIDI format, the notes are just numbers, so they could easily fit it on a hard drive. So, uh, How cool they, is that? Isn't that great? The, the data EFF sets are, has to get with these, with these guys and start suing everyone. No, the idea <laughs> so, is not so, to uh, sue. Yes, yes, yes just, to, to just to prove how broken it is. Yeah. So I did see, I did see someone on Twitter, Parker Higgins, who works for Freedom of the Press and who is an expert in copyright, said that this was a great... Uh, Stunt thing, oh. stunt, but that it doesn't actually mean that you can't sue for copyrighted works. I mean, it. He said you can't. You just the fact that you've simply reproduced a whole bunch of, you know, potential it's melodies. Not like you actually mean created. You've them. copyrighted them all. Yeah. yeah. Matthew, Although they also mentioned algorithm going with every possible combination of words. Right. <laughs> then every article will have been written. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, not, then you, yeah. no one would be able to copyright it. It is about they one point. That this, sorry, this was based on, or I don't know if they got the idea from, but Quinn Norton uh, mentioned something, I think in 2006, that she came up with a conceptual prank called Quinn's Symphonic Conundrum ah. that basically mm -hmm. said, get a computer program to write every conceivable melody. It's, you know, it's unknown really what the impact of this would be, but it's a great little hack. 1.2 terabytes every melody Great possible uh, and you can download it if you want all the melodies i imagine most of those melodies don't sound so good yeah i would love to have a little demo of them yeah no but it, i'm downloading them i'll play in them the right me. hand so those things could sound good you know the right no <laughs> no <laughs> some of them will just sound there off. are some combination of notes that no matter you, marvin they, hamlish or james brown could make <laughs> them sound good they also didn't include notes of different durations. So. Yeah, but you don't have to because, well, remember um, uh, Ghostbusters, right? Ni was it Niles Rogers? Who was it wrote Ghostbusters? Got sued by Huey Lewis because oh, yeah. they said Ghostbusters is the same melodic combination as I Want a New Drug. Yeah. It isn't the right. same song, right. but that right. melody, right? Even if one that. note sustained longer or maybe yeah. the rhythm's different, the melody, the, the sequence of notes... And they won, by the way. Yeah. I believe um, Vanilla Ice was in a similar situation, too. He should have been. <laughs> yeah. That's sampling. That's a, <laughs> another matter uh, entirely. The, the article quotes a more recent uh, case. I didn't know this, but you know S Sam Smith's Stay With Me, which is a beautiful song. Tom Petty mm -hmm. yeah. claimed, that's my melody. That's I Won't Back Down. And eventually Smith gave mm -hmm. Petty co-writing credits and royalties, which I feel bad because... I know this Do you remember what happened similar, with but... The Verge, uh, Bittersweet Symphony? Yeah, for so a long used... time, because they sampled something. Yeah, they sampled, a, a, I think it was an orchestral track, but it came from a Stones song. So they actually took the, the songwriter's name off it and put Mick Jagger and um, someone else on it. And then eventually... Just, uh, just they, a month or two ago, Mick yeah, gave not that it long back. Ago. Yep. Yeah, gave it back to him. Mick said, you know what? In fact, he gave all the dumb. royalties back, which is, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's pretty cool. That's really cool. Not that it's nice. a great song or anything, but the beginning. It was dumb that it even happened. Well, it was a sample, right? Um, yeah, but to take the credits off of it so that someone doesn't even get paid for it. Yeah. Mick certainly didn't need any more money. Well, I'm guessing it wasn't Mick, probably. It was probably... The, no, no, I don't think it was the, him. Usually it isn't. The music company that holds... <laughs> the lawyers. Yeah, yeah, lawyers. Usually it it's isn't. It's always the lawyers. I just... I thought that was kind of a neat uh, a neat story. 